I want to talk about labor for a minute because increasingly, I think uh, here in the U.S., we're seeing a pretty major degradation of workers' rights over time, gradually wearing away the power of unions, the extreme disparity between the cost of living and the minimum wage, the fact that the minimum wage is so different from place to place and the cost of living is rising everywhere while wages are not necessarily rising everywhere. Amidst all of that, in that conversation, I think it's also worth talking about safety in the workplace and ways in which the government is undercutting those directly. And one very clear example we're seeing now is that the Florida Senate has voted to ban any requirements for water and shade breaks for outdoor workers. <laughs> like several senators voted for this from their air conditioned building. And I wanted to bring attention to this because, you know, someone comments, don't federal work protections trump this? And then this person points out there aren't any federal work protections on this subject. OSHA has recommendations, but not requirements, and they're not enforced when it comes to water and shade breaks, like temperature control issues. And that's interesting to me as well, because it was kind of one of the core issues around the UPS strike that we had last year, or the near strike, can't remember if they actually struck, but they ended up getting a deal where they got better wages. And if the company commissions new vehicles, then the new vehicles are required to be fitted with air conditioning, but does not require any vehicles to be retrofitted. So that just creates an incentive to never get new vehicles because it'll be more expensive if you put AC in them. Uh, but yeah, so Florida just said, okay, as a state, we are banning all of these protections. So even if Miami, Florida, say, has a citywide protection saying, you're required to let workers take breaks every so often in this temperature range, and you're required to provide them with water and like pickles and electrolytes, you know, any local requirements, the state law supersedes the city law. And so they've said, nope, you're not allowed to, you're literally not allowed to give workers protection. And you know, it's like humid in Florida, super humid. So they're gonna have more issues with temperature at a lower actual temperature. If the if the humidity is high enough, then it could be 83 degrees and people could be like unable to cool off because their sweat does not work because the humidity is too high. So it's crazy to me, like why aren't there requirements? It's the thing, you know, as a person who has worked in trade work before and has worked in a union before, like it's so obnoxious that these companies always want to cut safety. If you're enjoying this video, hit the like button, maybe subscribe, hit all notifications if you want. Feel free to check out the links in the description. You might find some merch you like, or you can hit up the Patreon to support the content and find free stuff. And like, what is the, what is the government incentive of barring requirements to provide water for workers? I mean, I guess somebody's friend owns a, a share of a water company that sells bottled water, like a soda company that sells bottled water and shade breaks, I guess, obviously, you know, any requirement that you provide more breaks for your workers means that it's a requirement for them to work less on some level. And therefore you can't possibly have that. That's my opinion. Yeah. The regulations of OSHA are written in blood. Like those rules are there because someone got hurt, but that's not always the case because like anything else, OSHA like the, the people who write the national electrical code, like those people who set those safety standards are also subject to a lot of bureaucratic nonsense. And so sometimes, yeah, like with, as one example, as an electrician, one of the rules in the NEC is that in a new, in a new construction situation, or if you're adding new outlets or whatever, you're required, let's say in a living room to put in these special kind of outlets that have a, basically a mechanism inside them that pretend that protects it so that a kid can't stick something in one side and shock themselves. Um, but they're more expensive than regular outlets and they're required. And that's like a thing that, you know, happens a couple, there's a couple other examples like that, but it's like, because it is required that you use AFCI protected outlets or breakers in the electrical box, they're more expensive which sometimes means that because it's legally required for you to install them, you might have to leave someone with an unsafe, like sparking outlet 
or whatever, it like or like breaker. If they can't afford the proper one, they might not get it. So bureaucratically, they're setting these standards that ostensibly are about being safe. Ostensibly, it's, oh, you know, we want to protect babies from sticking a fork in the outlet. But in practice, it's bureaucratic nonsense for the purpose of making more money that in effect makes people less safe. So like with OSHA, you might think, oh yeah, it should be obvious that there are protections for heat because people can die from heat stroke. Not even that hard to do. And it's going to be more and more common with people with the temperatures rising and with more and more people developing POTS from their COVID infections, your body can't regulate temperature as easily. Like I am m more likely to get heat stroke than someone else because of my condition. So yeah, it, it's like really obnoxious that these institutions who we are literally entrusting with our safety, like the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, you are trusting that they are gonna set the standards. And this really bothers me as well with COVID that like, OSHA has not made any steps. I don't even think there are any suggestions, much less any requirements that workplaces provide personal protective equipment in the form of masks in order to let people do their job safely. There's no requirements that people update, that, that companies update their air filtration systems, even though workers, like for example, fast food workers or like retail workers are being repeatedly, basically forcibly exposed to a deadly and disabling biosafety level three virus and they're contracting it at work and they're getting basically injured at work by it and then they can't work but then there's no recompense you just if you gradually lose your ability to do your job because of repeated infections that are damaging your body like if you're calling out sick more often if you can't do the job as expected you're just gonna lose your job and then try to be seeking disability and then you have no recourse for the workplace that injured you so badly that you can't work. Like imagine that in any other situation, in any other situation where you are hurt at work, if you fall at work because the floor is wet or whatever, and you break your leg, you know, you'll get compensation for that. You'll get compensation for the time off. You can sue the company. Like the company is required to provide you with some kind of, you know, they're supposed to protect you at work and you got hurt at work on the job because of the job in a way that you would not have gotten hurt if you were not there. But when that thing is a deadly disabling virus, it just doesn't matter. And in the state of California, you're not entitled to compensation because a, a worker tried to sue basically for damages because he was exposed to COVID at work and it uh, like it hurt his wife more than it hurt him. Like she's much more negatively affected. And then yeah, state of California was like, no, employers do not have any liability. They have no responsibility to protect you from this. It's like, okay, well, can I write off the masks that I buy in order to do my job safely? No, you can't. Oh, of course. Oh, well, that's that's a step further than I would have assumed, Mama. Mama's theory is that workplaces in Florida will also generously allow employees to buy water and buy a water break. I was with you on the, oh, of course you can buy water. That's, of course, that's part of the point is like, because they don't want to be providing free water. They want employees to pay a premium rate or water bottle, bottled just like everybody else. They want their employees to have to stop at the gas station to buy water. Um, but buying a water break is really interesting. I wonder if they would create some kind of credit system, but no, they don't They don't wanna provide them extra breaks. They would, I think, literally rather you work until you drop dead. Like they don't care about giving you water breaks. They'll just replace you with someone else. It just sucks to be institutionally let down on so many different levels. Like that even the Occupational Safety and Health Administration it can't do the thing that's in the name of the thing, like occupational safety. Maybe you should weigh in on this. But then again, the CDC has given up on disease control. So <laughs> good luck. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You have employers who will gaslight and threaten you into not reporting them to OSHA for any violation. It's also amazing how employers think that there are just infinite workers to throw into the meat grinder. True, OSHA turns into OHA, the Occupational Hazard Administration. Much love to my patrons, especially Tiago Nascimento, Mersh Rolvog, Michelle Frateroli, Amanda B, Wellington Marcus, Michelle Winter, Danielle McDonald, DZXN, Suzanne Maynard, Spooky Heather Sylvia, Jamie Jam, Pastnell Infinity, Nova, Sojo, Elizabeth Bartell, Ella V Nobody, Kevin Young, Sarah A, Athiet, Celeste, Desi Quiche, Liam Hodgson, and Mr. Atheist.